Hi, my name is Aaron Bilbo, and welcome to the first episode of People Don't Like Us. Uh, I created People Don't Like Us around the idea that I want to find people that are like me, and that for whatever reason, despite our best efforts, people don't like us. <laughs> and it's not for the lack of trying to be a good person, that's definitely for sure. And maybe I talk too much. And maybe that's why I need my own podcast. Um, I also think that people don't like us applies to the moderates of our society. And that is to say that there are extreme opinions all over the place. And most of them are harbored by this two-party system that we hold. And when you're in the middle of disputes of the magnitude that we witness today often people just sit on the fence because maybe they don't want to lose a family member by telling them you're wrong (laughs) or they don't want to lose a friend so they just passively agree to disagree without even agreeing to disagree They just say nothing or laugh in approval or whatever. And I think it's time that we put a stop to that in ourselves. I think it's time that we really take a stand for where society really should be and where we should be going and applying moderation to our society. Um, I'm tired of the forced participation in the two-party system and I am done with the mainstream media and the lies that they tell. I mean, if you really watch the mainstream media and you don't see it from a perspective that is open-minded enough to understand that they're just using colorful language to give you tidbits of the truth while they really subliminally teach you talking points that you then go and echo out in public and sound like a fool. Um, One thing that bothers me to no end is people echoing talking points that they hear on mainstream or social media. Come up with your own ideas. You know, take a little bit from here and a little bit from there and compile it to form your own idea. Why would you run around using propaganda and jargon and not even understand that that's what you're doing? Um, I think that in our society, moderation is key. And moderation is where we find our common ground right the the society that continues to function outside of our homes and our businesses and our mind you know that when you're going to the store and you pass somebody and you say hey how you doing today you know, or excuse me, or you open a door for somebody, you don't stop and like judge them on their race and be like, fuck you, open your own door. You know, that is where our society should be mostly at all times. You know, the we spend too much time creating polarization and not enough time creating solutions. If we spent half the time creating solutions and actually acting to bring those solutions to fruition and the the rest of what polarizes us wouldn't be such a big issue if we just minded our own damn business so a big angle for this channel is going to be to push for moderation, to push for us as the middle ground of our society to moderate the rest of this 
lunacy that has us going off the rails in every direction, right? The, the founding fathers of our country that created the Constitution, no, they didn't get it 100% right. But minus the mistakes that they made by like not including women, not including other people of color, you know, things like that. I mean, the, the fundamentals to the Constitution, the rights that were given to men, and now women alike, and so on and so forth, we, we really need to hold on to the core of that. You know, we, we owe it to ourselves as a society to carry that through this generation and the next generation and the next and to constantly work to better that and not polarize it to the point that we end up in the situation we're in now where most people that even voted for Biden aren't even happy with the decision to vote for Biden. They just didn't want Trump in office. Like it's not acceptable on any level. And for us as people to accept that is just ridiculous. Why, why should we have to accept that? We are the people. So that's a big portion of this channel. And, you know, I also, I don't want to create an echo chamber using this channel, meaning I don't want everybody to just adopt my ideas and, you know, like I said, come up with your own ideas. Like I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that, but I do want to use this channel, this this podcast as a platform for civil discourse. I want to have people on here that disagree with me on certain fundamental ideas and I want to find out why and I want to be able to be inquisitive and have conversation and be intellectual without that devolving into an argument or into worse than that for whatever, you know, because the truth hurts or whatever. We need to be able to have conversations around these most controversial topics in our society today. And we need to understand that the answer is somewhere in the middle <laughs> of, of all of these situations that we find ourselves dealing with on a daily basis. The answers to these are mostly in the middle. They're, they're, the only extremely good extreme idea is to work hard, you know, to be a good parent, to be a good functioning member of society. Like if you can be extreme about that, you know, but like, for instance, I have extreme ideals too. You know, I honestly believe that all weapons should be legal and available to citizens provided you are licensed and registered. And I definitely, I thought about this. I think that, you know, certain weapons need certain levels of, or, or grades, if you will. And you have to get a license that approves that grade. You know, you have to prove some sort of proficiency or you, you know, be tested to own certain things. But I understand that that is way beyond the scope of possibility. And so I rein that in, you know, and I, I, but I don't accept the fact that our gun rights are constantly dwindling, you know, that, so that definitely goes against my personal belief. However, when it comes to my solution for a society, I'm not going to insist on my way, right? Because it's extreme. I'm going to find a moderate, you know, level that fits most everybody, not just the people over here or the people over here. You know, we all need to get out of that mentality of them and us and, you know, that, that tribal polarization that we have. 
Um, my goal in this channel with civil discourse is to bridge some of these divides to really find what it is that keeps our society ticking and keeps it ticking far after we're gone. Um, but this channel is not going to be entirely political. It really is only going to be like 40 to 60% political based on the current climate. It just so happens that the current climate jacks it to about 60% for me. <laughs> um, I also want to talk about philosophy, psychology, music, and whatever other people are passionate about. You know, I'm on this kick right now about pursuing your own passion, whatever that is. And the, with the advantages that we have at our fingertips these days, at least in America, um, we, we really can do just about anything. I mean, yes, there are certain physical limitations on, you know, or, or mental limitations for certain people, but realistically, we can find a passion in our lives and do just about anything that has to do with that avenue and find a way to create a career around it. I, I so whatever, you know, crazy ideas people have, whatever, but, but good ideas, not, not lunatic ideas. Um, I, I want to hear about it and I want to use the community within the channel to draw out topical ideas as well. Um, I'd also like to use the community to find guests for the channel for now. And again, it's most important if you want to be a guest that you're able to participate in civil discourse, otherwise there's no point, right? If we can't actually have a conversation and that conversation go somewhere, or at least we can respectfully agree to disagree, uh, there's really no point. Um, so keep that in mind if you want to voice any interest in being a guest. Uh, I, I'd also like to use the community as a think tank or an idea engine. So, you know, I want to use the community to help each other, to support each other's ideas, you know, to support somebody's blog or to support somebody's idea to manufacture some new toy that we don't know about, you know, or also, you know, if you have ideas and you're never going to use them and you know you're never going to use them, throw them out there. You know, let this be the place where you just throw them out there. And there might be somebody in the community that's like, man, that's a fucking great idea. I think I'm going to pick up the mantle and take that idea on. Um, and then just generally as a support network to deal with problems, you know, psychological or physical or whatever, you know, just a place where people can reach out with whatever issues they have, you know, that this community be an accepting community. You know, that's most important to me. Uh, I've always said, and, and I, I've heard this places since I've said it, but I've, I was the first one to hear it from myself or what, however you'd say that. But um, I'm really intolerant of intolerance. And I know that that even makes me a hypocrite because I'm intolerant of intolerance. But regardless, it's always been a point of mine that fair and equal and just is at the forefront of interactions. And clearly that's not the case. Uh, and I get that to some extent, but I guess it's when I have that expectation of people and they let me down 
that I feel that. Um, so th those are some of my ideas for the community. I want to use this time now to kind of get into my first topic a little bit, but it's also as it pertains to this video. And, and these are topics that are definitely going to come up at a later time, probably multiple times. Fear and anxiety. Um, I want to talk about the fears that I had coming into doing this. Uh, one thing that stopped me from doing this for a long time was the fear of being mischaracterized or misrepresented. You know, it happens all the time on social media. Uh, I'll say something that is either just completely baseline or that might be some sort of devil's advocate type of argument to something and it gets taken way out of context. Um, I'm over that. You know, I think that this medium is going to be the best way to solve that problem. Uh, I think as I continue to make videos and we actually hash out some certain issues and my opinions come forth that people will begin to understand who I really am. And I think that context is everything, right? And intent. Like, we're all adults here. And if you can't understand that my intent here is just to have a conversation or my intent is pure, uh, as opposed to, you know, just rude, <laughs> um, people get offended so quickly. And <laughs> the minute that you say one thing that's like in support of an idea or, you know, you immediately, especially these days with the two party system and the, you know, as soon as I say something positive at all about the Biden campaign, I'm a Trumper. And as soon as I say something positive about Trump, I'm a liberal snowflake. You know, this is not the case. Um, I actually hold a lot of ideas that align with, with Republicans uh, as far as smaller government control is concerned and gun rights. And, you know, there, there are definitely some things that I fall on that side of the aisle for as far as this aisle is concerned. And there are things that I am more liberal about, as, you know, maybe compassion is one, but um, not compassion to the extreme that it's been taken to these days. Um, so that that was one fear, mischaracterization and misrepresentation. Um, another fear is that the podcast wouldn't work. And of course, uh, that's just a fear that I have to get over with. Or, did I say that right? I just have to get over it. So, um, but the direction that society is headed or is headed, uh, that's definitely helped me get over the fear that this won't work. It, it, for me, it's not really about, you know, whether or not I can get to a point of monetization. It's about just, can I reach one individual? Can I, can I reach two, three, you know, that remains to be seen, but I definitely think this day and age that is possible. So, you know, that, that helped me beat my fear of that. Um, fear of upsetting loved ones or, you know, friends or family. There, there are stories that I have to tell experiences in my life that are definitely going to hurt some people close to me just to tell the truth. And, uh, it, I get it, but it's my truth to tell too. And 
I think that one core value of this podcast is just going to be me being my genuine self. Like it or not, it's coming. And, uh, some things, other things that help me get over the fear of, of doing this, um, are the fact that I have children now. I have a three-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter, and I worry about the world that we're all headed to. I mean, our, there's a, hello, there's other parents out there, right? Like, you must be this concerned about this situation. Like, the divides in our country are unacceptable by by American standard, by the America that I was taught that this this is crazy. And we owe it to ourselves and to our kids and to our kids' kids to take care of this. Um and and, and above everything that the one thing that has finally driven me to speak my mind is that I am tired of being silenced I'm tired of going on to social media and trying to voice an opinion and people are like jumping down my throat because they think that my opinions invalid let me tell you there's a difference between right and wrong and valid and invalid. So I can say that you're right or wrong or that I agree with you or disagree with you. I cannot ever say that your opinion is invalid unless it doesn't pertain to the topic that we're discussing at all. Uh, I.e. if I said that aliens were to blame for the problems in the black community and we were discussing you know black community issues that's completely irrelevant therefore invalid so but if we're having a conversation about whatever the topic whether i fit the demographic or not I have a right to an opinion. I am one whole 100% of a person. If I'm having a conversation with a group of mixed race people and we all of a sudden start discussing the topic of Muslim religion or something, you know, I don't know much of anything about the Muslim religion. I do know that there are different facets of it to some extent, just like how Christianity is broken into different denominations. There are some Muslims who are more progressive than others. And, um, you know, there are clearly Muslims that radicalize and there are Muslims that are just pure based on the old way Muslims. And I, I respect that, even though I don't agree with most of it. I mean, that's the way that they're, their society is um the point here being if the topic of muslims comes up in this conversation with mixed race people just because i'm white and non-muslim doesn't mean that i'm not allowed to have this conversation i don't have to omit myself and i don't become zero percent of a person just because somebody wants to try and invalidate me uh you, when I go into a conversation like that, you listen first. I think no matter who you are, um, it doesn't really matter what the conversation is, whether you know something about it or not. When you're talking to somebody, you listen first. And then I take what I hear and I omit any bias as much as I possibly can, you know, unless somebody tells me that they're going to kill somebody, you know, the, I I don't concern myself with the fact that, that a Muslim may get down on their knees and pray for however much time every day. Like, 
no, I don't agree with it, but is that relevant, you know, to what fixing whatever convert? No, like, so when you have a bias and you're discussing situations where those biases might appear, um, it's your responsibility to omit that bias, not to omit yourself. Uh, you omit that bias and then you formulate a thought that is as neutral as possible, right? And this is where I'm getting at with the moderation in our society and the whole point of this channel. So <clears throat> I'm tired of being silenced and I, I refuse to be told that my opinions are invalid. So I'm going to lay my opinions out there and I guess society is going to tell me whether they're valid or invalid. Um, and I will say that I, I don't care if we disagree. I don't care if you don't like me, if you don't like looking at me, if you want to write me off because I didn't go to college or because I'm a straight white male or whatever reason that you want to write me off, that, that is your own problem. And bring it on. You know, I, I, I don't care. Um, the next topic, and it's much lighter than overcoming fear, is procrastination and laziness. And I think that these two things go hand in hand, and these are both reasons that I haven't gotten around, gotten around to doing any of my ideas uh, that I've had over the last I don't know, five years or so since I've kind of been getting myself and my life together. And so um, procrastination, I want to talk about first. I, uh, I watched a TED Talk not that long ago about uh, by a guy named Adam Grant. And he was talking about how procrastination and creativity have a correlation and that uh, those who procrastinate are often more creative than those who don't. And I think this is a great excuse. So I'm talking about this first, but, uh, you know, that, that, that much has definitely proven true. If you watch the Ted talk, um, he talks about that waiting until the last minute to make a decision, uh, it gives you more time to think about whatever it is that you have to do and to prepare for it. So in essence, that's helped me with this podcast because I, I had this idea months ago that this all started with a name. People don't like us. And, uh, again, all of these things culminated in me, not just, jumping up and getting into action. Uh, but the time that I've taken, like, oh, I'll do it next week. I'll do it this week. I'll do it. You know, that time has given me the time that I needed to make this video what it is and at least what I hope it turns out to be, right? Um, so with that being one positive to procrastination and, you know, procrastination is been a lifestyle for me forever and there are certain things where procrastinating is helpful and it helps you just get your priorities in order and you don't worry about things that don't need to be worried about right now you worry about them as you need to worry about them um you know those are all positives but ultimately procrastination and laziness are just excuses that we tell ourselves to either make ourselves feel better or to not have to go through some strenuous task or arduous task that we don't want to perform, uh, we give ourselves these excuses and we can make all the excuses and justifications we want, but we must recognize that these are just excuses. <laughs> um, so with that, I want to talk about a little bit of a challenge that I have in mind. And uh, I want to talk about the death of ideas 
that comes with procrastination. So I've found this in myself that um, there are definitely certain ideas that I've come up with that maybe require too much money, you know, so I don't have the capital to handle said endeavor. Um, but I have found a problem where when I have an idea, if I procrastinate it for too long, then I either become bored of it or I convince myself it was never a good idea in the first place and I just push it to the side. Uh, I, not that I'm going to start a movement here or anything, but I really want to challenge people who are like me in your procrastination or your laziness. Um, I want you to take that seed of an idea and I don't want you, I'm not going to tell you to do it right now. You got to get up right now, go to your computer, do it or, you know, no. But what I will say is put the, take that seed of an idea in your mind and tell yourself that soon, soon you are going to do something towards making that passion come to life. And let that soon ruminate until soon becomes now or never. And do it. Do it soon. With that said, um, I love all people. And I really want to make some kind of lasting change in this world. And... I think that together we really can be unstoppable. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Thank you.